Flight of the Crow's Wing presents Gate Guarding in the Texas and Louisiana Oil Fields, March through May 2022. This was our second year of doing gate guarding to earn money for further travels. Our first gate assigned to us was a 12-hour gate near Smiley, Texas. For this gate, we stayed at the J&G Security Standby Lot and commuted the hour and a half drive to the gate. At this well, a small mobile derrick was moved in to do what is known as a workover, which cleans out a well that is not producing as much because it has sanded up. Traffic through the gate was generally very slow, so we took turns wandering off to explore our surroundings and to meet the neighbors. How are you this fine day? Some of the neighbors did not want to be met, such as this rattlesnake, who slithered off as fast as he could run. The next week found us at our second site, which was just inside the Texas state line west of Shreveport. We thought this site was very noisy, because it was so close to the rig, unlike the other sites we've worked at in the past. We didn't know just how lucky we were. We noticed there were a flock of crows that kept visiting the area, and we were determined to make them our friends. The road passing by our site was a small dirt road, with a no through oil field truck traffic sign. You'd think the road would be quiet, but it was heavily traveled by oil trucks, mud trucks, and stray dogs. At night, the rig was lit up like a Christmas tree. During the days, we took turns doing errands, running into town to do laundry or pick up groceries, or to find a good cell signal to upload a video. Remember, if you're rude to a gate guard and you don't give your name, you will be assigned a name. And if you're nice to the pipeline supervisor, they'll bring you breakfast. We took it upon ourselves to keep an eye out for the local wildlife and to keep them from getting crushed by the local traffic, whether they approve or not. There were a couple of severe thunderstorms and a couple of nearby tornado touchdowns. Luckily, other than getting wet, we were unscathed. This guy was so beautiful, he stopped traffic. It was our first sighting of a speckled king snake. Our visitors weren't all of the cold-blooded variety. This is our exercise field, the road at the gate. We walk up and down the road, back and forth.
here she comes to save the day Some heroes don't wear capes, they wear fluorescent vests. The local strays decided our rug was a good place to nap after mooching food from the rig workers all day. Guess who's back? Back again. Speckled Kingsnake. Tell a friend. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Over time, we started to gain the crow's trust. Not their respect, but at least their trust. They came to see us frequently for snacks. Their favorite snacks were peanuts in the shell and dog food soaked in water. Then came the day they moved the rig to a new location and we went with them. It took them three full days to disassemble, move it, and reassemble the rig into the new site. If you're interested in seeing how the derrick was actually raised, hit the link in the corner and you can watch that video. Here the doghouse is being attached. This is where the um, drill master controls everything. Eventually it was finally upright and they were ready to go. At this site there was no place outside to park a trailer, so we wound up right on the pad with all the rig workers. You thought the last place was noisy? This place had it beat in spades. The driveway leading to the pad was much shorter, so our exercise laps were also much shorter. In the morning, Elizabeth would gather up all the large moths that had worn themselves out circling the bright lights of the rig, like this beautiful Luna moth. And I made friends with the baby red-eyed devil. From this close, it was easy to watch the rig workers do their jobs. When the work was going well, the workers were rewarded with catered food, and we got to join in. You gotta love Cajun cooking. I don't know what's going on, but the big horn blasted about three times. Now everybody's standing over there, and there's a lot of smoke coming out of the well. I don't know what it is. They were cementing the casing, and the cement built up enough pressure to force the casing pipe up into the air about 100 feet. Apparently, it's just one of the many dangerous things that can happen on a rig. I got to watch as one of the men carefully chained the clamp at the bottom of the traveling block to pull the casing upright and clear of the pipe stack.
Once the casing was mostly upright, the roughneck had to be hoisted back up to reposition the clamp. He did not appear to be enjoying his night. I watched as they carefully maneuvered the casing back into the derrick. Then he had to go back up to disconnect the piping from the casing. Eventually, the piping was disconnected and was slung down a winch line into the pipe yard and out of the way. And with that, most of the evening's excitement seemed to be over. In the morning, Elizabeth was back rescuing her buggy friends. This beautiful specimen is a polyphemus moth. I got to try out the nighttime settings on my new camera while photographing the blood moon, otherwise known as a total lunar eclipse. Unfortunately, all the lights from the rig interfered with my photographs. We found out that this rig was a walking rig it can move itself from one well head to another. The first time it moved, we hadn't noticed until the next day that it was 40 feet over, so we decided to keep a closer eye on it. Sneaky, sneaky oil rigs tiptoeing around the yard. While Beth was making friends with insects, I was making friends with arachnids. I think mine was cuter. And then one dark and rainy night, we noticed they installed a flaming fart tube. By burning excess natural gas, flaring protects against the dangers of overpressuring the industrial equipment. Just like the natural gas, we were burned out and ready to hit the road. Soon we'd be on our way to Amarillo to pick up our teardrop trailer for a three month vacation. Thanks for watching, friends. What's going on out there? You got some friends? No, I don't have friends. I think you're a friend. And remember, be kind to the strays and the creatures that we meet. We are crossing their paths as much as they are crossing ours. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe.